Um, one of the things I think that's so important to us is we talk about mobile, just to, to go back to a couple of things Dan was saying. And, you know, any concept now that there's actually a difference between your tablet, your laptop that's wireless, or your smartphone in your pocket, everything is mobile. So when we look at it, although digital engagement and intelligent assistance are powerful from a mobile standpoint, I think you'll be quite interested to see some of the data that we took out of some surveys that we've done. I want to thank everyone for their time today, Dan, for putting this conference together, and for all of you uh, from an attendance point of view. This is a very important topic to us as the inaugural event for intelligent assistance. A little bit about IntelliResponse, not a commercial, but an experience point. We've actually been in industry over 12 years, and we have 167 customers, seven of the largest banks in North America, out of the top 15, largest healthcare, largest utility. There's a lot of companies out there that are doing it right today and are actually using intelligent assistance or intelligence around the customer engagement strategy and digital self-service. But we've seen this huge shift not over the last previous nine years, but over the last three years, as customers begin to flock towards expectations in the digital channels that they can self-serve. What we'll see in some of the statistics is I'm not talking about search. I'm not talking about FAQs. That's not customer engagement and low customer effort. In fact, it's the opposite. It's high customer effort. What we'll talk about today, then, over about the next 23 minutes, and I know Dan will keep me on time, and Mark Hennessy, our VP, is really to highlight some primary research we've just done, talk briefly about two customer examples uh, as well, and then uh, turn it over to the rest of the day. So what did we do our primary research on? We use one of the top tools now, which is Google's uh, own tool for doing consumer-based research. And in this case, very recently, we researched 1,000 consumers. And what we were trying to discover was, what was their attitudes towards self-service? What were their expectations towards engagement from a digital engagement perspective? And really, do they care? And why do we do it? Because frankly, it's great to be out there as vendors talking about how important this is and how we all need to be engaging from a digital channel perspective. But if the consumers don't give a darn, it's really not very material to you as business people in doing it in the first place. So that's why we did it. We wanted to validate that the consumer themselves expected self-service, expected a digital engagement strategy that's different than it was today. So one of the things we did when we engaged these 1,000 consumers is one of the first things we asked them for is, where is the first place that you go when you're looking to buy, not simply service, but you're looking to actually buy in regards to a product or a service? Now, most people, again, would assume that social media is huge because everyone wants to interact with their friends and find out actually who's buying what and things of that nature. Or in fairness, mobile app only. I'm going right into the mobile app to actually do that discovery. But what we found was that in general terms, 67% of those consumers are first, maybe on their mobile device, their tablet, in the comfort of their home and their laptop or PC, zeroing right in on your company website. And that is where they're starting their journey with you. Now, I don't know the last time you took a look at any of your websites to ask what that journey's like, but that's where they're starting it. So the second question we asked was where's the first place you go for answers as it relates to customer service engagement? Now, again, it may surprise you, but 58% of the people started their journey on the company website. For those of you with massive call centers, chat, email, all those big support services to, to really engage customers, again, that's where the customer is beginning their journey. 580 people basically at that survey of 1,000 said that's where I'm going. Phone was a distant second at 25% when I'm actually looking for customer service questions. And this goes back to a key concept that we will keep coming back to ourselves about low customer effort. The next item was what kind of relationship do you want with the brands that you engage with today? Now, romantically, 
we all want to think we're Nordstrom's. We all want to think that we offer the best, delightful customer service in the world, and that's what every single customer wants. Apologies, a little uh, excited there. But the bottom line is, the majority of customers, 59% in this case, want an efficient transactional service. They don't want to be delighted. They just want you to get it right. And that's a big difference for most companies. So when we look at it from our standpoint, the engagement is not romantic. The engagement is very almost efficient and transactional. They want to have that effective service from that standpoint. Personalization was down at around 24% for personalized service. 11% just say buying goodbye. You know, literally, I bought my fridge from you. This is great. I don't want to talk to you again. I want my fridge to run for the next 20 years, and I really don't want to have any reason to interact with your customer service side. But if I do, the propensity of people are looking forward to an efficient service from that perspective. The other thing that we hear again and again, so how many individuals in here with their mobile subscriber today, you don't have to put your hands up, know that they can phone the call center and get one answer, go to the website and get a second answer, probably go to social media in a slightly unhappy mood and get a third answer. And the issue that we see time and time again is customers want consistency across channels. Not only your phone channel, but your digital channels. In fact, through the work that we did, 74% of customers all agreed that that was critical. Give me consistency. Don't let me think I can game the system by phoning your call center back three different times from a mobile subscriber point of view and getting three different plans till the one I actually want is the one I'll take. The next one that I think is so critically important is about stereotyping our customers. 60% of customers between the ages of 18 and 34 are likely going to use a mobile app or smartphone to engage with you from a customer service point of view. Now, many of us can write that off and say, that's great, you know, they're young, that's the way they want to interact, but let's think of a couple of stories. So Reader's Digest is a good example of this. What do you think the demographic of Reader's Digest is? That age group or an age group where you could add probably 20 or 30 years to the low end or high end. And so what's very interesting is that Reader's Digest was very forward thinking about the way that they engaged their consumers. What they actually did, because my, my dad, my dad's 82, basically got an iPad from me, probably looked at it like this, and then put the Reader's Digest app on it and downloaded all his content to that iPad. But that's where his digital journey is now. He is actually using that iPad. Reader's Digest was forward enough in thinking about it. And then from there, they want to engage him, but they want to engage him in the channel, which happens to be digital, and the device, which happens to be an iPad in that case, where he's most comfortable. He does not have a stack of books gathering dust next to him in his library. He has one iPad, and that's how he's engaging. So be very careful when you stereotype your customers about who wants digital self-service and who doesn't. Now, one of the things that we found, which obviously is happening across any business today, is the likelihood of escalation to different channels. When you know that 58 to 60 percent of your people that are coming in from a consumer point of view to interact with you are actually starting on your digital channels, not in your live channels, and you force them to switch because you can't answer their questions, you can't engage intelligently with an intelligent agent or things of that nature, 75% take what they wanted to do, which was talk to you in your digital channels, where it's probably costing you pennies, and you push them to a channel they didn't even want to be in, which is probably costing you four, five, or six dollars or more per interaction. Not only that, by the time that consumer actually got to that escalation, they're not happy because that's not the channel they started in and that's not the channel they want to be serviced in. The dangerous thing in a pure e-commerce play is around the abandonment or defect or the defection of customers. 25% will either just abandon if they can't get the answers from your website, 
or fundamentally go if they have that kind of flexibility. It's not about mortgages maybe at that point unless you're shopping for a brand new one. To another provider that allows them to engage effectively from a digital self-service point of view. So one of the things we did was we looked at 100 top organizations and we asked what are the primary goals that they have for online self-service. The number one goal to the left is all about deflection. Let me get calls and emails. Let me get that all out of my call center. And that's great. I don't think that's a bad goal. I just think it's the wrong one to shoot for. That's an outcome of great low customer effort. The next one is lower the level of customer effort required to actually do business with us. It is amazing to me the number of organizations today that have never eaten their own dog food. It is so easy. Now, this is how easy I think it is, and we blogged about this earlier, about two weeks ago. Go into your call center or your contact center and ask them what the top 10 call drivers are for that organization. Fairly simple question. You should be able to get that out of your contact center quite readily. I want you to take those 10 key questions that are the 10 big drivers of calls. Go to your website today and try to solve each of those questions. I think you'll be appalled at how hard you make it for your customer to digitally engage with you today. Another place where intelligent agents have a big or intelligent assistance impact on the business. Make agents more effective. That goes back to consistency in our view. Increase CSAT and reduce website abandonment. If I were to only pick one goal for any of you today, when I look at it from my perspective and what we talk to our customers about all the time is Think of lowering the customer effort. What is your customer effort score in digital channels? Think about that and use that as the proxy. Because I would argue today, if that is your focus, you will drive all the other results here by default. Because low customer effort is really, again, I'm a customer, one and done. I just want to deal with you efficiently on that transaction, and I want to move on. I might want intimacy. I might want a little bit more assistance, but then I'll escalate, hopefully intelligently, from that digital engagement into other live channels. But let me get what I need to get done, done, and move on. It might not surprise you, but the industries currently that are providing the best online experience is retail. Why? Highly transactional. They want your dollar every single time. It's not like a bank or a utility where fundamentally I have your relationship. If I'm a utility, you're fundamentally not going anywhere else. There's just not 10 different utilities in the backyard to shop from. But what we found, we have over 14 utilities now that use IntelliResponse. It's still important for all of those to run very efficiently and effectively from a customer expectation point of view for digital self-service engagement. Telecoms, utilities, banks, and others way at the other end of the spectrum in terms of what industry is providing the best experience today. Now this is both good and a little scary at the same time. Companies that are interacting with consumers online more than ever, and due to this trend, what do you think, of course, are the activities that businesses have improved at the most through this process? Well, we've gotten really good at selling things to people and marketing things to people. What we're not really doing very well is helping those same customers who've engaged us from a brand point of view and who may want to be repeat buyers of our products or services. This is why we think it's so critical to have the whole concept of driving customer self-service and engagement on the digital channels in front. One of the things that Dan talked about earlier that we believe strongly in is if I understand the intent of the questions through natural language that consumers are asking in my website and I can deliver the right answer to that customer, I've passed a very important psychological threshold with that customer where I've helped them first, not marketed or sold to them first. The likelihood of a customer, once you've passed that threshold, to be open to a targeted offer that is related to the intent of their question is 20 times what it would be if I just spam them. So you can use intelligent agents or assistants to not only engage the customers constructively to deliver the content that's actually important to them, but it is a great opportunity at that moment, that moment of truth, 
to engage with that consumer with something meaningful. Most of the organizations we work with today look like the pyramid on the left. But what we've seen from the statistics we've shown out of our survey, and I'll call another one that we can talk to you about separately, that's 88,000 consumers in uh, the US that was done recently, is that your consumer all actually looks like the chart on the right. So all the investment and everything that you're pouring into your phones, your emails, and your chats is actually not on side with the data which says the customer wants to predominantly interact through digital channels. I'm not saying that you're going to abandon your phone channels or abandon your email channels, far from that, because they do have a very important uh, part in every single business. But if you can't engage the customer in the channel that they prefer, you have to really ask yourself, are you setting yourself up for success by continually over or continually investing in those other channels? And we'll talk about uh, an interesting one as it relates to uh, my Uber experience uh, last week and trying to get a hold of customer service if you use Uber. Um, one of the interesting things that we did was we actually looked at these top companies and we looked also at what we call the Fast 500. So Deloitte's, if you're familiar, does an analysis of the 500 fastest growing companies in uh, the US and North America. And what we did was we looked across all 500 of those companies for what the predominant customer service engagement strategies were. Believe it or not, even the smartest, fastest growing companies, site search is 61%. I don't know if find a question is really what my consumer wants when they engage with me. I don't think it's low customer effort when I return 187 results to a customer and say, you know, by the way, why don't you go see if you can find the answer in all our PDFs, because we're not really sure which one has it either. So we'll leave it really up to you to uh, drive that through. Customer portals. That flows into not only portals, but communities and things of that nature. Don't get me wrong. I don't think communities themselves, for example, are a bad thing. But if an intelligent virtual agent can learn from the best answers that are given by the community and encapsulate that into its intelligence, why would I ever send a customer and drop them into a community if I can deliver that right information at that right time? So we see that customer portals, again, tend to be uh, very much FAQ driven as well, find the question, and again, force all the customer effort on the customer, a high customer effort experience. The last one was the contact us form, or what I call the page of last resort for any customer. And typically, more and more now, we're hiding on that page, phone numbers or anything else. So I was unfortunately in um, last week, I was out in Campbell near San Jose, and I was on the line with Uber. And I was actually just ordering uh, an Uber uh, cab to come pick me up. And something went terribly wrong. I picked the wrong credit card. And so I tried it, tried it again, and Uber shut me down. They said, sorry, we can't help you at all. So now I'm trying to get an intelligent answer as to why they shut me down. Well, I got to send an email while I was sitting calling a cab to Uber, who responded 24 hours later to me to let me know that, oh, you had two credit cards. One of them was out of, you know, I guess I hadn't updated it, um, and the other one was updated. And that's why we cut you off. If I was able to interact either through voice or through text uh, with an intelligent virtual assistant, I probably could have solved that problem or at least known what was happening at that exact moment. Instead, the next thing I did was I got on social media and lit up Uber for what was a lousy customer experience. That's a very leading edge company that's doing amazing things that at the same time has a poor customer service experience. So it doesn't matter if it's a leading digital company or Reader's Digest. We all have to look at the problem the same way. So how do we get there usually is the question that a lot of our customers ask us. You know, how do we actually get from where we are today and put in an intelligent agent or assistant uh, strategy that really is going to drive self-service and digital, uh, in the digital channels that we want to uh, interact with? And we believe that the foundation for any solution in the market today is you need to understand the intent of the customer. Search is not about intent. Even smart search is not about intent. 
You need to be able to take in those questions in natural language, understand what the customer's actually trying to achieve, even understand the customers never ask the questions the same way twice. It's not actually about this unlimited sea of answers you need for customers. It's actually about understanding the intent in the question and how many intents are related. If I ask a question such as uh, of the, my virtual agent and one of our banking clients, I've lost my wallet, what do I do? Or I can't find my credit card. Or I'm in the UK and someone's pinched my, my wallet. Or I can't find my purse. All of those a virtual agent should understand mean one thing. I've lost my credit cards or banking information and what's my next step? Search is not going to solve that problem. But an intelligent virtual agent that can learn from each of those interactions, grab that at collective intelligence and know how to respond to that is very, very powerful. The intent is not only at the basis of answering questions and having that conversation intelligently, it's about understanding the intent of those questions from a voice of customer perspective to use that for predictive analytics, and then about delivering that one right offer when you actually need to. I'm going to briefly talk about Optus. Optus is the second largest telco in Australia. They have 10 million customers, and they have a major focus on actually moving towards uh, the area of self-service. Um, we started working with Optus about a year and a half ago. They knew that their customers were flocking online. In fact, telecommunications and mobile uh, environments are probably the biggest ones for transactional-based services with their customers. I want to update my plan. I need to get a text package because I'm traveling to Europe, things of that nature. And they really understood, Ollie here, that that's where it was being driven towards, the transactional services that their customers really required. And they were really seeking a digital self-service strategy. So we began working with Optus on really transforming their support. And literally, in the first few months of using us, their, their goal was, you know, if we can just get three quarters of a million people to engage and ask questions, that would be great this year. Well, we passed that in month three. We had four million questions asked in the first year of launch with Optus, of which 94% of the answers returned back to those consumers were dead on accurate for solving the problem. Here's where it gets really interesting and the, the power really in the end of an intelligent assistant. Before Ask Optus, 84% of all uh, interactions consumers had were with either phone or email, and about 16% tried to self-service online. A year and a half later, 65% of all of their consumers satisfy their particular needs from an interaction point of view online. They've now introduced chat which I think is very intelligent, and we intelligently flow the virtual agent, virtual assistant conversations into chat, or even intelligently into the call center as needed. And only 24% of interactions now from the consumers through this are through phone and email. That's pretty dramatic. And what's really interesting about that is that's not about the customer being forced. That's a customer choice. Copa Airlines is the largest airline in uh, South America. They uh, fly roughly 300 to 325 flights a day, service, I think, roughly 64 countries. And nothing's more aggravating as a person who flies a lot than when I can't get answers either pre-actually buying a ticket or post-buying a ticket. So Ask Anna was brought online with Copa Airlines with a real focus on changing the, the, the self-service engagement strategy for Copa, where almost everything was phone-based, email-based, uh, uh, up to this point. Within a short period of time um, of introducing Ask Anna, within six months, 35% of all interactions with Copa moved to the digital channels. Consumers basically said, oh, great, I have a way of intelligently interacting with Anna. And that's where they started going, 35%. By June 2013, 50%, one of every two interactions from a consumer were not with a call center, were not with email. They were with the intelligent virtual agent, Ask Anna, solving the problems through interactions that way. Looked on the reverse way, it's really saying the same thing. We basically had a massive impact of reducing the call and chat volume to 65% from 100% roughly in the first six months. And then 
the next stage was a 50% reduction in the call and chat volume. Now, we can all look in here as businesses and say, let me see, $6 a call, I start figuring out the number of millions and millions of dollars I'm saving. And that's a great outcome from low customer effort with intelligent assistance. But the real win at the end of the day is that the consumer's choice was to digitally interact in the digital channels. And by enabling those, you got the benefits without just forcing it down the customer's throat. I want to thank you very much for your time. Hopefully some of the statistics we've provided, uh, we can actually dive into them even deeper outside, uh, provide some value as you're looking at it. I think um, two things I would leave you with. There's another great study of about 88,000 consumers in the US that was in the Harvard Business Review probably about a year and a half, two years ago now. And if you talk to us, um, it's called Stop Trying to Delight Your Customer. <laughs> But what was amazing about that is it really talked about the whole self-service engagement strategy and it was carried out by the customer executive board. Great study if you're looking at hard numbers on this. We actually have a book as well called Low Customer Effort. And if you stop by and see us and leave us your business card, we'll personally mail you out. I know it's old school, but we'll personally mail you out the book, CEB, um, because it is, in my opinion, one of the best views from a non-gut perspective on the impact of customer self-service in digital channels. Thank you very much for your time.